Now the application message view model is a little bit different. We saw with the dashboard controller that it is associated through view injection with the application message view. In its constructor, it contains a reference to the container and reference to the event aggregator. That allows it um, in the close command to use the event aggregator uh, to call the hide application message. So someone else is going to tell the controller to stick it in the region. It, uh, through the close button, is going to call this close command to be able to tell um, the, re the region manager to remove itself. So if we run the application, what we get is that in the header region, we get the application header view inject or uh, um, that was registered with that region included, and then we get the dashboard view um, that was registered with the main body region uh, showing and appearing there. So this is the next step where we get just the first module included and the first um, two regions filled up with views. Let's add our final um, module, but before we do that, we need data for it. Uh, if you're calling our bootstrapper, uh, we had made reference to not only the customer's module, but also to a service. Um, if we're going to get data for a module, we need to have access to this service. So we need to add a model service, um, and let me my own comment reference to infrastructure. We need to be able to add uh, something that implements this model service. So um, what I have is a model project, which just contains some plain old C sharp objects. I also have a model data access project uh, that creates some lists uh, that contain uh, data based upon the model. And it has in it a model service that needs a reference to the model into the infrastructure so it can supply a model service that implements the I model service that was specified in our infrastructure or services so that will enable us to uh, get the data that we need um, for our final module So let's add the customer's module in here as well. Same sort of thing that we saw with the dashboard. We've got a class. This is just a class library. A uh, class called customer's module by convention named that way. We've also got a customer's controller by convention named similar as the dashboard was. It's got a views folder. It's got a view model folder. It's got an events folder. It's got uh, an event that's specific to it, and that's showing customers. Let's look at the, um, oh, let's make sure that we go back in our bootstrapper. And now that we've got our data access, um, model and our model data access. Also going to add reference to our customers. Now we have our model service that we're registering when we're configuring our container. Um, 
Incidentally, this little true on the end is going to help to register it as a singleton service. Then under our create modules, we can uncomment here our reference to our customer um, library, which contains our customer's module. So now, now our bootstrapper is complete. It's going to have a catalog. It's going to contain the dashboard module and the customer's module. And it's also the containers configured to include a service that will be able to give us our data. If we go back and look at the customer's module, once again, it implements iModule, which is the Prism interface. During its initialize method, it uh, gets a reference to the controller. It does so because the container was included as a dependency. And dependency injection is going to allow us to uh, use the container, get a reference to it. So we're going to create a customer's controller. And then here we're going to use, uh, as we saw before, view discovery to take our uh, customer list view, which is one of our views here in this customer module, and register it with a body region, which will make it a tab just like the dashboard tab. And then log some information to tell us that yes, uh, it was initialized correctly. If we look at our customer's controller, similar to the dashboard controller, it has it uses the uh, dependency injection to get a reference to the container, and that allows us to get a reference to the logger, the event aggregator, and the region manager. If you're seeing a certain uh, duplication of code here, yes, you feel free to create base classes that uh, will enable this to simplify your uh, concrete classes. Um, I just chose to uh, be a little more obvious here uh, with what was going on. Uh, we have an event aggregator uh, reference here that um, subscribes to the show customer event so that we can show a customer. That event is included in this module and is not included in the infrastructure because um, this module is only concerned about this event. It's not really uh, visible uh, right now outside of this module. Um, it's just showing a way you don't have to make everything global. When that's called in the show customer event, it's going to use view injection to put the customer view um, into the customer region. Similar thing, get a reference to the region, a resolve a reference to the view model, use the view model, uh, initialize the view model with uh, whatever's passed in the message, in this case an actual customer. Uh, get a reference to the view. Um, if there are any other views in the region, we want to remove them. And then we want to add this particular uh, view and set its data context to the view model and activate it. So using view injection to be able to make sure, in this case, it's the one and only view in the region. In our views, we see we've got the customer list view that's going to be made a tab in the um, body region of our shell. Taking a second to come up contains the current customers and a list of them. And then, although you can't see it terribly well, there is a, another region here, which is the customer region, our final region, contained within a content control, specified the same way. In this case, I'm using uh, a static reference to the name customer region that we included in our infrastructure. So instead of just spelling out the name customer region, sometimes it's preferable to have a static reference. So you don't misspell it and then wonder what went wrong. Um, our customer view, when we pull it up, is going to show us some details and have a button that we can um, click to show outstanding orders. Um, when we do that, it's actually going to uh, send a message to our application message that will show in our modal dialog region. Let's look at the customer list view model. The customer list view model in its constructor gets a reference to the Unity container. 
uh, the customer list view model. If we look at the customer list view, remember this one is one of the uh, two views that are uh, that use uh, view discovery uh, to be added to the tab um, region, the uh, body region, the tab control. Um, in the list customer list view, it refers to the customer list view model as a dependency. When it is created by the dependency injection cre uh, container, uh, it allows it to be able to use dependency injection uh, to get a reference to the container, which allows it to get a reference to the logger, the event aggregator, and the model service. Uh, when in the um, customer list view, after it does that, it initializes its view model, and that initialize calls the model service, the get all customers method, which gives it a list of customers, and then it's able to take that list of customers and fill out the data grid. It does that by um, um, actually populating some customer list item view models which um, reformats the data a little bit so that uh, it appears um, and you can see it with the first name and the last name and so forth. Let us go ahead and show you that what uh, where we are so far in the process by running the app see if we have anything to fix any of those references to fix before uh, it runs. It's looking good so far. Thank <music> you.